to understand the book of Exodus, and in fact to understand any book of the Bible, and particularly these first five books of the Bible, the first question you really need to ask is, who was it originally written for? And, of course, we believe that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, and indeed we believe he wrote them as a unit, which is why we had you do a study on an introduction to the Pentateuch, so that you could start thinking of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy as, as one big book. In that context, it's interesting to see that right at the middle of the Pentateuch, you have the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law is, uh, begins to be given in Exodus chapter 20, and it runs all the way through to Numbers chapter 10. Uh, all of that action happening in one place, in Mount Sinai. That means, from the big book perspective of the Pentateuch, in Genesis 1 through Exodus 19 is introductory, and Numbers 11 through to the end of Deuteronomy kind of um, recapitulates the law, in a sense, and, and starts to take the story a little bit further. But the law is at the centre of the Pentateuch. And so um, Genesis is explaining to the Israelites who came out of Egypt, um, to whom Moses, of course, is writing. Genesis is explaining who they were, uh, why they were leaving Egypt, why they were in Egypt in the first place, who their God was, particularly who their God was in contrast to the gods that they had experienced in Egypt and who they would experience in Canaan. Um, and then, of course, through Genesis, Moses is um, certainly emphasizing the priority of faith uh, because the patriarchs are, are characterized by faith, and it's through faith that they overcome all manner of obstacles. And that's meant to be a pattern for these Israelites coming out of Egypt to follow, so that they know that, that only by faith in the one true God will they truly become the people he wants them to become so that they might reach the nations of the world in God's name. It's the, the Abrahamic covenant, remember, Genesis 12, 1 to 3. The whole reason why God has raised Israel up is to reach the nations. <coughs> so when you come to Exodus, um, Exodus chapter 1 begins with a reference to the Abrahamic covenant because the people of Israel had become so numerous in Egypt which, uh, which is in direct fulfillment of Genesis 12, 1 to 3. They've become a great people. God was faithful. He was beginning to come um, to, to bring his promises to his people about. Um, but then they're in slavery uh, under Pharaoh, and then Moses is raised up, and through Moses they are delivered from their slavery and, um, and taken out to Mount Sinai where they're given the law. When we look at the book of Exodus then, um, as one unit of the Pentateuch, we see that it begins with, with the nation of Israel, or the people of Israel rather, being delivered from bondage. They're taken to Mount Sinai, there they're given the law, and the Mosaic law, or the Mosaic covenant, is kind of like a national constitution. It's God telling Israel in quite significant detail how they were to live amongst themselves so as to be the kind of people they needed to be in order to fulfill God's purpose of reaching the nations. Um, and so they had moral codes, they had ceremonial codes, they had ethical codes that are given in the law. Um, and really it's at Mount Sinai that Israel becomes a nation. And, uh, and this Mosaic covenant, this Mosaic law that they're given is a means by which they could fulfill the greater calling of the Abrahamic covenant to be a blessing to, to the whole earth. Um, but Israel is delivered from slavery in Egypt. At Mount Sinai, they're given the law. But neither of those two events, though they dominate the book of Exodus, are an end in themselves. God didn't just deliver them with wonderful miracles from Egypt for the sake of it, nor did he give them the law just for the sake of it. Rather, he delivered them, gave them the law, so that, Exodus chapter 40, he might come and dwell amongst them and be their God, and they might be his people, and that they might have this intimate, wonderful relationship. Turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 40, because in Exodus chapter 40, I think you have the, the climax of the book. You have, you have the, uh, the point of the book of Exodus. Um, it often gets overlooked because Exodus 1 through 15, you have all these wonderful miracles that people tend to focus on, and the drama of the conflict between Pharaoh and Moses. 
Egypt and the people of Israel. But really, I think the, 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 the biggest blessing in the book of Exodus, the, the greatest miracle in the book of Exodus is recorded in chapter 40, verses 34 to 38. Let me read it to you. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Um, that's just verse 35, but you get the picture right there. Right at the end of the book of Exodus, God comes and dwells amongst his people. Under the Mosaic law, he'd given them a moral code by which to live by. He'd give them ceremonial instructions. He'd, he'd had them build the, um, the tabernacle, which would be his dwelling place. Um, and uh, all for the point that he might come and enter into a, a intimate or a more intimate relationship with his people. And so when you put that ending to the book of Exodus with the beginning, where they are redeemed from slavery in Egypt, I think you know, the big idea of Exodus is that the people of Israel are redeemed by God for relationship with God. And of course you can see where this is going with respect to application for, for believers, because for Christians, when, when we are delivered from our sin, that's not an end in itself. God doesn't just save us so that we can be forgiven of our sin and our guilt can be removed. That is a wonderful blessing. Um, that uh, is an absolutely necessary work, but it's not the end in itself. The end is so that we might be able to enter into the very life of God. We might be able to enter into fellowship with God. And so it was just the same for the Israelites. They were redeemed from bondage in Egypt through the wonderful and powerful work of God, hand of God, so that they might enter into a relationship with God where he came and he actually dwelt in their midst physically. Um, we have the privilege more than Israel where God comes and dwells in us individually and in us as a church. Um, but the, uh, the big idea is the same for us. Um, for us as it is for Exodus, God redeems people so that they might enter into a relationship with him. Seems to be the big idea of Exodus.